Let me give you a little context behind this video. One of my friends told me, I don't really make crock pot meals because it seems like all crock pot recipes call for cream of soups, cream of chicken, cream of celery, cream of mushroom, all those soups. I had a conversation probably two days later with another friend who said the exact same thing. And I just thought, that's so odd because I feel like we rarely even have cream of soups in our house. I just don't cook a lot with cream of. I've made hundreds of these recipes without using cream of. So here are some of our favorite ones, no cream of crock pot recipes. I know you guys are gonna love them as much as we do. We're gonna make a crazy easy crock pot meal, okay? This is like kind of a layered lasagna made with some ravioli. Super easy to do, but so good, so delicious. All of my ingredients are set out right here, all ready to go, except for one thing, which is the ground beef back here. Now I wanna tell you, ground beef, ground sausage, ground pork, ground turkey, there's so many different ways you can do this, so don't feel like you have to go the ground beef route. The first thing that we need to do though is take a couple different cans here and we're gonna combine them and make our own sauce. If you have a marinara or a pizza sauce or a pasta sauce that you love, you can skip this, the mixing of the sauce, and just use those. We're gonna be using one can of tomato sauce here, and I'm just gonna use my measuring bowl to do this. So I'm gonna dump the whole thing in, and I don't even know if all these are gonna fit in here, but we'll try. And then I have three cans of diced tomatoes in tomato juice. We're not gonna drain these. These are just all gonna go in here. Actually, I might drain one. Okay, I should be wearing an apron. Yeah, I don't know if all three of these cans are gonna fit in here. It's like a pour in and back away at the same time. Okay, yeah, all three cans are not gonna fit in here. I do have one more can, but we'll add that in in a minute. We're gonna add about two teaspoons of Italian seasoning. Feel free to add as much or as little as you want. We really like it, so I'm adding a little bit more. I've also got some balsamic vinegar here. I'm gonna add approximately a teaspoon, not really measuring. The Amazon delivery guy's here, and that is why my dog's barking. I'm gonna add a little bit of salt to this, about a teaspoon. And we're also gonna add some minced garlic. I'm gonna add about two teaspoons. And this is one of those things, again, add more or less. This is actually gonna be hard to stir. I don't know how in the world I would have done all three cans in here. I needed a bigger bowl, apparently. Ooh, it smells good already. Now, one thing that I like to do that most recipes don't call for is just adding a touch of sugar. And I mean, when I say a touch, I mean like a half teaspoon. Totally up to you. If you wanna skip that, that's fine. It just cuts the acidity a little bit. That balsamic vinegar is also gonna help do that. About a half teaspoon. And we're just gonna combine all that together. Let's pull the crock pot over and we're gonna start to do a layered system. So I'm gonna start by just putting a little bit in the same way that you would do lasagna. I'm gonna put a little bit of sauce at the bottom. Now, if you're doing this in a big bowl, you could also put your ground beef in here with your sauce too. I'm just gonna layer it uh, in the crock pot. I'm gonna add in some of the ground beef. And this was a very lean ground beef, so I didn't really need to drain anything off, but you just do whatever you need to do. Now, the recipe only calls for mozzarella. I do have a mozzarella, but then also at Sam's Club yesterday, we picked up this massive bag of the shaved blend Asiago Parmesan and Romano. And I feel like that's gonna be really good in here, so I'm gonna add both. Let's just add in some cheese. And it doesn't really matter what uh, method you use for lay layering or you know what how you do your layers. Sometimes I even forget what I did in the previous layer and just do it differently. I did get a family size bag of ravioli. If you wanna make your own, that's totally fine too. This was just easy and convenient. So let's add in some of these ravioli. We'll create Kind of a layer with that, but I'm not too worried about it being perfect. Also, I am making enough that we will have leftovers for lunch tomorrow. So if you cut down this recipe, you can you can absolutely cut it down depending on how many people are in your family. But I'm assuming for our family, I'll let you know after we eat this tonight or after we serve it up. I am assuming this will be six to eight servings. I don't even know if I'm gonna need all this sauce. I may not use this other can. Let's add another layer of sauce. Yeah, I don't think I'm gonna use that other can, guys. This is, this is quite a bit of sauce. So I think we're gonna be fine with just that. So that was two cans of the diced tomatoes and one can of the tomato sauce. You can also use crushed tomatoes too. We're gonna to add some more ground beef, like some. Some more noodles, or ravioli, I'm gonna, 
I'm gonna dump all the rest in. Yeah, perfect. And we'll just kind of spread them out a bit. I'm gonna go ahead and layer the rest of the sauce on the top just to make sure there is enough cooking liquid for everything. Also, if you wanna add that other can of diced tomatoes, please feel free to do that. And we're gonna to top with the last layer of cheese. Now, normally my preference would be to cook this on low for six to eight hours, but it's two o'clock. I got started a little late today. We're gonna to cook this on high. We're at least gonna start it on high and let everything really get going. I may end up switching to low, but we may do high for four hours. My husband seems to think we're gonna eat all of this in one sitting. I don't know, my son really does like bread sauce, so we'll see how that goes. But I did reach in and try it just a bit ago because I was curious. Um, it was very hot and it burned the end of my tongue, but the flavor was awesome. So we're gonna start serving this up. I'm gonna let it cool for just a minute before I try it for you guys. All right, for a crock pot meal, Lazy lasagna, this is right up my alley. It's really good. The ravioli that we used this time were delicious. We looked for ravioli at Sam's Club and even though we had tried that ravioli before and it wasn't our favorite, I did think that it could go well in this recipe, but this ravioli is really delicious. Also, I definitely do not think that we needed the other can of tomatoes. So I think that just depends on how much your family is gonna be making, but this is going to be so good. I'm gonna come back afterward and tell you guys how many servings we think this is actually gonna be. So we'll see how we fare at the end of dinner. Just for a point of reference, I do think this is what we have left after dinner tonight. And I do think that this is probably six servings with the amount that I made. You guys, sweet and sour meatballs is a family favorite. Serve it over rice with a nice green side. They're perfect. Uh, you can serve them over mashed potatoes too, but we love them over rice. You don't even have to thaw these, by the way. I would thaw the sauce just a little bit like leave it out on the counter for like 30 minutes, then throw it in the crock pot, but you really don't even have to thaw it. But cook on low, probably like five to six hours. So let's make up our sauce, okay? We're gonna go with about three fourths a cup or so of brown sugar. Now, typically this recipe wants you to use a full cup of brown sugar. The reason I don't do a full cup is because we use coconut aminos instead of soy sauce. Coconut aminos, they're sweeter than soy sauce. So I don't wanna have too much sweetness in this. So that's why we go a little less. We're gonna add about three tablespoons of arrowroot powder. This is basically the same thing as cornstarch. We just use arrowroot instead. So feel free to just use regular cornstarch for this. We're adding about a fourth cup of just regular vinegar. We're going to add about three tablespoons of coconut aminos. And because coconut aminos is a little bit sweeter, like I said, we are gonna add a little bit of salt to this because the soy sauce is what's giving you that salty flavor, but we're missing that, that key element. So I'm gonna add about a teaspoon or so of salt. Now, again, there are so many different ways to go about this. You could add like a nice chili seasoning, um, like a sweet chili seasoning. There's We've made sweet and sour meatballs so many different ways and not one time have I ever thought they weren't good. I made up my own meatballs. You do not have to do this. You can buy bagged frozen meatballs, but I had ground beef. I had everything to make meatballs. It just made sense to make them. But one thing I like to do is make them up, put them on a flat tray and let them freeze up on the flat tray before you put them in the baggie and that's gonna help them keep their form, okay? So they've been in the freezer, they're all nice and hard. Now, if you're using a bag of frozen meatballs, they're gonna be that way already. Take the sauce and just pour it all over the top. And make sure to get all that brown sugar. Now these are just gonna go back into the freezer, prepped and ready for us to put these in the crock pot. So easy, so good. You guys already know we love chicken noodle soup. We're gonna take just plain chicken noodle soup and make a creamy version. I am so excited. This recipe looks so delicious. I've got chicken thighs here in my crock pot insert. I have made chicken noodle soup plenty of times with chicken breasts. Feel free to do this whatever way you want. I would say one large chicken breast 
or two small chicken breasts. This is three to four-ish thighs. And we're just gonna start adding ingredients. Open up this can here of roasted red bell peppers. These are so delicious in a soup like this. So we're gonna add approximately a half cup. Please feel free to measure this. I'm just going, like I said, I'm going approximately. But as always, if there's an ingredient that you know you love, feel free to add more. If there's an ingredient you don't love, feel free to add less or none at all. Okay, we've got a lot of different little spices that are gonna go in this. I'm gonna start with parsley, and we need one teaspoon of parsley. And I actually have my teaspoon measurer over here, so we're actually gonna measure this. So teaspoon of parsley. We're gonna add about a three-fourths or so out of a teaspoon of salt. We are adding some oregano. Technically, we only need like a fourth teaspoon of oregano, but we really like it, so I'm gonna go more toward a half. I'm also going more toward a half with the basil. We are adding lots of good flavor. All right, and then we need to add in some minced garlic, and the recipe actually calls for a teaspoon. You guys know I always add a little bit more than what a, recipe's call, a recipe calls for, though. So we're going closer to like one and a half. Now we need four cups of chicken broth. I'm using chicken bone broth. You guys have seen me use this. And I've also got some homemade one. I'm defrosting that right now. Okay, so that was about two cups. And then I'll add the other two once that is defrosted. We're gonna cook ours on high for three hours. You can also do low for six hours, but it is one o'clock. So we're definitely gonna do high. And then we'll come back, shred the chicken and move on. This chicken has been in the crock pot. Everything's been cooking for about three and a half hours, actually. We're gonna take the chicken out and shred it and then put it back into the crock pot. And then uh, you can actually probably shred it just directly in the crock pot. I just wanna make sure there's not any fatty pieces that I need to pull off, so that's why I'm pulling it out. If you're using chicken breasts, you probably can just shred it with two forks straight inside of the crock pot. So we can add this back in. You can use whole milk or light cream, but I'm actually gonna use half and half for this. It's, it's basically milk and uh, heavy cream. So about the same effect. And we're adding about three fourths of a cup. Now I'm also gonna pull out a little bit of the liquid and we're gonna mix in some, this is tapioca flour, but you can just use cornstarch if that's what you have. About a tablespoon or so. This is just gonna help to thicken it up a little bit. So I'm gonna pull some of that liquid out and just adding some of the liquid here separately is gonna help kind of like blend it all together. And then you don't get any chunks of that cornstarch or the tapioca flour straight into your crock pot. Yeah, that just nicely and quickly blends it all together. And now we can just pour it in. Now you can use whatever kind of pasta you want, but I'm gonna be using egg noodles. We're just gonna pull all of those in. And I'm also going to add in some spinach. We're gonna give about one cup of fresh spinach, a quick chop, and then toss that in there as well. You can skip that if you don't like spinach. It's just kind of an easy add. This doesn't have to be a perfect or a pretty chop at all. It's all gonna get really wilted into this soup. Okay, put all that in there. Let's just give this a quick stir. And then the lid's gonna go back on for about 20 minutes or so. You're basically just looking for your noodles to become uh, al dente. You're looking for that perfect noodle texture. And then that's gonna be ready to go. It should thicken up a little bit as well with that cornstarch in there. All right, this thickened up just a little bit, like the exact amount that you would want for a soup like this. Now I'm gonna take this and just add a little bit of this Parmesan cheese on the top. And there you go. Look how delicious this looks. Let's give it a try. Okay, I think, I think I've let this cool for long enough to try it. It's so perfect, especially since today it's actually very cold outside. It's like our first cold day of the year. That cornstarch added just the right amount of thickness to it, so it's still soupy, absolutely, but it just added a little bit. All those Italian flavors are delicious. 
I really like this one. I make baked potato soup and I love to prep this one ahead of time because it does take a little bit more prep work. So this way everything is ready to go. We can make this in the crock pot or the instant pot. If you're cooking it in the crock pot, then you wanna cook it on high for about five hours and then add some heavy cream right at the end. You're gonna see here that I'm also gonna be adding ground beef to mine and I like to cook it ahead of time and then I like to add the ground beef about 30 minutes before serving just to make sure that it reheats. I'm gonna dice up about five large potatoes. You could actually buy the bags of frozen potatoes and that would make this step even easier, but I already had the potatoes, so for cost effectiveness, I went ahead and just diced them up myself. You wanna add about a cup of shredded carrots. Once you've got your carrots and your potatoes in the bag, you could also add celery. I chose not to, but I'm gonna add four cups of chicken broth to this. I am also adding some minced garlic and I am running low on this, so I probably ended up adding about a teaspoon and a half, but ideally for this recipe, you would have three teaspoons. I'm also gonna add a little bit of butter to this. So I'm adding about a fourth a cup of butter or maybe three tablespoons is what I ended up adding. I am adding two teaspoons of salt and about a half a teaspoon of pepper. Most potato recipes call for diced ham, but I actually don't like ham. So there are like three things that I really don't like to eat and ham just happens to be one of them. So instead I am adding ground beef. And so I have about a pound of ground beef here that I'm just gonna go ahead and saute. I'm gonna go ahead and cook it up and have it ready to go. And then I'm going to let it cool and put it in a separate freezer bag. Now you could store these completely separately in your freezer, or if you wanna be like me, you can go ahead and put it in a separate freezer bag and put that freezer bag inside of the one that has the potato soup in it. And then, as I said before, you just want to cook all of your other ingredients in your crock pot or your instant pot. Your beef's already cooked, so it really doesn't need to sit in there either, you know, for five hours in your crock pot or in the instant pot for several minutes. So you can just add that at the end and just reheat it and let it get warmed up. And that is it for the baked potato soup. I hope I'm really excited about this next recipe. We're actually kind of over time developing this one and making it from scratch. So I'm gonna share it with you guys. We're walking our way through this one. Let's get started. I've got some bacon cooking up on the stovetop right now. So that's gonna be ready to go. The first thing that we need to do for these barbecue crock pot baked beans is add in some great Northern beans. So I've got some great Northern beans here that are drained and rinsed. We use two cans of these great Northern beans. Okay, so let's put all of these into the crock pot. You can also just use a can of pork and beans. That's just not my preference. So we're kind of more making this from scratch. I do have one cup of brown sugar. Let's empty that in there. We've got some salt. Let's add about a teaspoon of salt. And you can also add pepper if you would like. Add some garlic powder. Let's add about a teaspoon of that. So many good flavors here. Feel free to chop up some onions and add them into yours, but instead I'm gonna be using about a teaspoon of onion powder. Smelling good already. Let's add one more dry ingredient. We're gonna add some chili powder. And I know this might seem a little bit weird, but just just hang with me here because we've got some flavors going on. Okay, so I, again, I'm gonna add about a teaspoon of chili powder. I've got some ketchup and we're gonna add about three tablespoons of ketchup. And I'm also gonna add some mustard. I prefer this stone ground mustard. So we're gonna go with one tablespoon of stone ground mustard. If I have that left, we'll see how much we can get out of here. We're probably right at one tablespoon. Awesome. Now you can absolutely add molasses to yours if that's something that you regularly have. We are gonna add maple syrup. And again, I'm gonna do about three tablespoons of maple syrup. We also need to add in some vinegar. So I'm just using plain white vinegar. You can use apple cider if you want. We're just going with this one and I'm gonna add a tablespoon of that. I'm gonna work on getting this all stirred together. 
And you can feel like if you wanna add water, that's totally fine. It's an optional ingredient here. I'm gonna start by not adding water, especially since we're in the crock pot and a lid's gonna be on all day long. We'll see how the sauce kind of forms throughout. But at this point, we are not adding water. We've got some cooked bacon. And I think overall, I'm probably gonna add about six pieces, but we're just crumbling it up and adding it in here. Now, this is one of those recipes that you can cook all day long for you know six to eight hours on low. It is already two o'clock, so I'm gonna be cooking this for about three to four hours on high, and I think that will be totally fine. Now, this is nice and crispy bacon. I don't know if I said that, but you do want your bacon to be crispy. I mean, it's gonna soften back up in here, but at least a little bit. Now, this next ingredient you might think is a little bit weird, but trust me on this. We're gonna add, oh, it's still hot. <laughs> We're gonna add about a tablespoon to a tablespoon and a half of bacon grease. And you can add up to two tablespoons, but I think this is gonna be good for us. All right, let's put the lid on. Turn this on high for about three to four hours. All right, let's give these baked beans a try. Look how delicious they look. That sauce thickened up. If you just take your lid and set it off to the side of the crock pot for just like the last 20 minutes or so, it'll thicken up really nicely. That's pretty good. They're sweet. But if you wanna cut down on the sweetness, I would say go a little less on the brown sugar, but the flavor is on point, you guys. You can taste the little bit of chili seasoning, which almost gives them kind of a smoky flavor. And then you have that bacon, which really elevates the salt. These are good. It, this is one of our favorites. White chicken chili is just so delicious. All right, guys, we are going to start Actually, before I do anything else, I'm going to go ahead and label my bag. You guys know we gotta do that. You can skip this part if you're gonna be making this all right now and just dumping it into your Instant Pot or your crock pot. So basically with the crock pot, we are just going to, we're gonna cook on low for six-ish hours, on high for four hours. And I make really little notes for mine when I write on them because I know what I'm talking about, but make as many notes on your bag as you feel like you need to add. Okay, for the Instant Pot, we're just gonna cook on high 15 to 18 minutes. We're gonna get started with all of our ingredients. I do have chicken thighs. I have absolutely done this before. With chicken breasts, you can do it either way. It is not a big deal. That is not something that's going to affect the recipe that much. I have a good pair of kitchen shears, and so that's what I'm gonna be using to cut up these chicken thighs, and I'm gonna put them straight into the bag. It's totally up to you. If you wanna go ahead and cut them up, that's fine as well. I just think if I have these out, I may as well use them. I'm gonna be careful to trim off some of the fat just because I'm not a big fan. All right, so you guys see me make quite a bit of freezer meals here, and that is actually something, we use it a lot in our household. Um, on nights when, there are certain nights when maybe I have worship practice at church in the evening or something like that, but I wanna put a good hot meal on the table, or maybe we've been out of the house a lot that day, there's appointments or the kids have activities, or whatever it may be. I feel like for us, freezer meals just make my life so much easier. And this one, this in particular video that I'm doing right now, we are actually, let me not cut the paper towel. We are actually going to be taking these freezer meals with us to the beach. If we're on vacation. We also like to be able to eat at home. I know what recipes we enjoy. I know what flavors we're gonna love and we're gonna save money by taking some of it with us. And if we're gonna be at the beach, I definitely don't wanna spend the entire time of us being there just standing in front of the stove all day long. So I like to prep things like this before we go and then it's ready to go. We can throw it in the crock pot while we're down at the beach. We don't have to worry about it. And then that evening, I didn't have to stand in front of the stove, but we have a nice home cooked meal. This video isn't really all about freezer meals, but I think a lot of people think that freezer meals don't make sense for their family because maybe there's only one of you or two of you. My suggestion to that is absolutely, it is for you as well. What I would do is instead of putting all of it in one bag, I would have three or four bags right in front of you and just split the ingredients in between those bags. And then what you're getting is three to four freezer meals that you can pull out over the course of the next six months or so, and I'm getting one which both are great, but it's gonna help you as well. 
We've got our chicken in the bag, that's ready to go. We are going to add about a teaspoon of oregano. So I'm not gonna measure this, I just do this by sight. We love oregano. So typically, even when it says a teaspoon, I will go a little bit more. You add whatever flavors you love, keep those flavors out, scale them back, add more, whatever it is that you wanna do, depending on the flavors that you enjoy. We're gonna add in some cumin. This is another one that we absolutely love. I love the taste of cumin in a recipe. This one calls for about a half teaspoon, so I'm going closer to a teaspoon. That's actually probably like a teaspoon and a half. We definitely need to add a little bit of salt. We're gonna go right around a teaspoon of that as well. Okay, so we've got all that. Now the next thing that we like to add, and you can go as mild, medium, or hot with these as you want, this is a can of green chilies. We love green chilies in our white chicken chili. It's delicious. Now I am going to drain these, so we're gonna open up the can. Not even hardly enough to drain. So we're gonna go ahead and add that into our bag, and I add the whole can. Totally up to you whether you wanna add the whole can or not. Now, a lot of people add onion to their white chicken chili. We are not, so we are gonna add some onion powder. And I'm gonna go with probably a half teaspoon or so, maybe closer to three fourths. And then we're gonna add minced garlic. This is something that I enjoy no matter what. We always add more minced garlic than what a recipe says. If you haven't noticed, I really like flavor. So we're gonna go with probably around a teaspoon. This is my half teaspoon measure. And that's that's probably two garlic cloves-ish. Now, the next thing that we always do is double the amount of beans in a white chicken chili. This is one of those recipes, like obviously you already have good protein in this because you've got the, the chicken. I like a lot of beans. I also like the fact that for something like this, when I can throw in an extra can of beans that is you know, just over a dollar or so, it's gonna stretch that meal and we might even be able to get lunch out of it the next day. So we pretty much always add two cans of beans. I always drain and rinse our beans though. I also don't know if I mentioned, but we're using great northern beans. I've actually also used cannellini for this before as well. I don't think it matters. You should use whatever kind of white bean you like. Okay, we're gonna pour all of those in there. Now, a lot of people add corn to their white chicken chili. We actually love corn, but for some reason, none of us really care for it being mixed into things. So things like chicken pot pie, um, I don't know, when you think of corn, oh, shepherd's pie, that's another one. We prefer it on the side. So I'm leaving the corn out of this. If you like to do corn in yours, absolutely throw some corn in there. I'm gonna add a touch of lime juice, just about a teaspoon. That's all you need. All right, we've got some non-fat plain Greek yogurt here. You can use full fat Greek, Greek yogurt. It does not need to be uh, non-fat. You can also use sour cream. That's what most recipes call for. I'm gonna add about a half a cup into this. Now, another thing I have done many of times, many times when I've made white chicken chili is add in cream cheese and that is delicious. So I don't have any in my fridge right now. That's something I need to go to the grocery store for. But I will say when I go to actually make this one, there's a good chance that I will add about two to four ounces of cream cheese right at the end. It just adds to that creaminess and it elevates it. It's so good that way. So if that's not something you wanna add right away, you can always uh, write on your bag, add you know cream cheese. All right, we make our own chicken broth or bone broth. For this recipe, you need in between three and five cups. I typically will start with more along like the three and a half to four. If I need to add more, I absolutely can, but you wanna add that. That's gonna help everything cook up nicely, blend everything together, so good. Some of it is still a little bit frozen. Chick, uh, chicken stock is a staple, or bone broth is a staple in our house. We've got all of this in the bag ready to go. Another thing that I am going to do is in a little separate baggie because I already have bacon cooked and ready to go and I don't wanna have to worry about it the day that I make this. If you top white chicken chili with a little bit of sour cream or Greek yogurt, plain Greek yogurt, and a, a little bit of like cut avocado and some crumbled bacon, 
that will take it over the top for sure. So because I already have that cooked and ready to go, I want to add a little baggie of that. And I think I'm actually gonna double bag this one, especially since we are taking, it is not closing properly. There we go. Especially since we are gonna be taking this in a cooler to the beach, I'm gonna end up double bagging. Let's go ahead and get some bacon. You can crumble it before you put it in the bag. You can crumble it later. It'll freeze nicely. You don't have to worry about it at all. But at least that part is ready to go and I don't have to worry about that. Look, crumbles and done. All right, let's double bag. I can put this bag in here. You can put all your toppings in there if you want, but I think this will be good. And there you go, all in the bag, ready to go. As I'm thinking about this, I cut up the chicken into pieces and technically you don't even need to do that because you're gonna be shredding it. You can definitely just put your chicken in there whole. I think I was skipping ahead to another recipe in this video, but either way, it's totally fine. So you're just gonna cook this up, shred that chicken after it's been in the crock pot or the instant pot for a little bit. Another thing that sometimes I will do is when we make white chicken chili, I will, I'm not gonna do it at the beach probably because I don't think we have a good enough blender down there, but I will pull out about three fourths a cup of this soup straight out of the crock pot or instant pot, okay? Put it into the blender and puree it. What that does is when you pour it back into the soup, it kinda acts like a thickening agent and you're gonna get, a, it's, it's just all incorporating in and it thickens it up a little bit. Totally up to you, that's just another tip that I have. Our verse today comes from James 1, 2 through 3. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds, for you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. If you enjoyed this video, I have so many more crockpot recipes that do not have cream of soups. Check out my playlist of crockpot recipes and you are going to get so much more inspiration.